Well, just to be clear, I don't know why anyone in the great state of South Carolina would ever vote for Lindsey Graham. Uh, It's just outrageous. This is the guy who keeps saying, stay tuned. He said he was going to get to the bottom of Obamagate with the Judiciary Committee, which has been a year and a half, actually longer, of absolute inert, inert response to these pressing issues of our day. And this is what, by the way, Donald Trump said of Senator Lindsey Graham back in 2016 while he was campaigning for the presidency in South Carolina. I believe the Senator, the president's words about the senator then apply today. He said, I think Lindsey Graham is a disgrace, and I think you have one of the worst representatives of any representative in the United States. I don't think he could run for dog catcher in this state and win again. I really don't. Other than that, I think he's wonderful. He's one of the dumbest human beings I've ever seen. The guy is a nut job. Graham has betrayed President Trump at almost every turn. He has betrayed the American people and his oath of office. He's done absolutely nothing to investigate Obamagate except to tell everyone, stay tuned, time and time again. Stay tuned. Senator Graham needs to be tuned out in South Carolina. The right is starting to eat itself moments before the 2020 presidential election. That was Lou Dobbs, an influential Fox News host, attacking Republican South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham, basically saying no one from South Carolina should vote for this man. Days, less than two weeks before an election, one of the biggest nighttime Fox News hosts is telling people, don't vote for Lindsay, or more accurately, I don't know why anyone would vote for him. Basically saying that he doesn't stand with the president when it comes to fighting for the things that conservatives, Republicans, you know, freedom lovers, quote unquote, want to see. Lindsay is all talk, no show, no stake, all sizzle, and we should just tune him out. And you cannot overstate the significance of something like this given how close the polling is in South Carolina. Look, Lou Dobbs is awful. He peddles in ugly theories and ugly ideas, and he empowers some of the worst voices in the United States. So I'm not endorsing Lou Dobbs by any means. But the fact of the matter is he has sway with Fox News audiences and Fox News audiences tend to vote Republican. And in a state like South Carolina, where he's telling people don't vote for Lindsey in a race where the polling is basically a dead heat between Lindsey Graham and Jamie Harrison, you're darn right this could make a difference. It's He's not suggesting that these people go out and, and, and drop their vote for Lindsey Graham and vote for the Democrat, but he is sort of giving them permission to vote third party or to maybe leave their Senate vote blank or maybe even to take a wild card shot and vote Democrat. But the point is, when you're taking an existing Republican voter, even if you can't convert them to your side, just removing them from Lindsey Graham's tally makes a difference. If Lindsey Graham has hypothetically 5,000 more votes than Jamie Harrison right now, statewide, it is going to be very close, I think. You have to say to yourself, how do I close the gap? And you can close the gap in a variety of ways. You can get 5,001 more people that don't vote to vote for you. You can convert about 2,500 people from Lindsey Graham directly to you or through a combination of those two things, but also getting Lindsey Graham voters to just not vote Lindsey Graham could be enough. If you get a few thousand of each of those categories, you can turn the South Carolina Senate seat blue for the first time in generations. It's truly a a once in a generation opportunity to elect a non-Republican in a very red Senate state. And that opportunity needs to be seized. And Lou Dobbs clip here, regardless of the fact that it's based on just, you know, total ranting. And I don't think there's necessarily validity to his claims more often than not, is something that could be mobilized to disincentivize Republican voters in that state. 
But beyond that, it's very interesting because as you guys know, we've been covering it on the channel. Lindsey Graham, no fewer seemingly than dozens of times over the last few weeks, has been on Fox News basically begging, literally begging for money on Hannity, on Fox and Friends, on other shows, saying, you know, Jamie Harrison and the Democrats, they're they're killing me money-wise, they're out-fundraising me, I need money to fight back the Democrats and support Donald Trump. Go to lindsaygram.com, he'll tell you time and time again, at the beginning, at the end of every Fox News interview. And so clearly, Fox News is having him on, and they're giving him an opportunity to raise a bit of money each time. So there are some elements of Fox News that clearly want to see Lindsey Graham continue. But then there are people like Lou Dobbs that see Lindsey Graham as part of the globalist cabal, basically, and he just says to, to heck with him, throw him out with the rest of the, the neoliberal globalists, if you will, like this sort of like nascent far right in America that hates a lot of Republicans as well. And it shows the triple cleavage, I think, at Fox News. On the one hand, you have the real journalists at Fox News who maybe lean Republican, but don't support the, the lying regime that we see. And you might see someone like Chris Wallace who, you know, just wants to actually cover the news as it is, or a lot of their actual on the ground reporters. And then you have the more traditional Republicans that are going to back the Republican no matter what, and they're going to have Lindsey Graham and Donald Trump on. And then you have a growing segment of like, of countercultural right wingers like Lou Dobbs that see people like Lindsey Graham as the enemy. It's not just that they like Trump more, they see him as a traitor to Trumpism. And so these three segments of the right were sort of all kept together as long as there was a chance Trump could win. And he could still technically win, but the chips are really starting to land in favor of Joe Biden with about 10, 11, 12 days left. And so there really is a sense from my perspective that you could see a lot of serious infighting at Fox News between the three broad streams. I don't think any of them are actually respectable people necessarily, but the point is Dobbs, Hannity, Tucker Carlson, Laura Ingram, like all of these people, some of them have different perspectives from those like Chris Wallace. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see these things play out. Suffice it to say that regardless of the reason, Lou Dobbs trashing Lindsey Graham, helping Jamie Harrison get elected, can't be a bad thing.